Hi, and thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Ask Emily, where today I will be answering all of your questions related to kitchens. This first question comes from Stephanie, who said, what do you prepare or cook on those nights when you finish work late and are too tired to cook something that requires a lot of time? Do you have go-to snacks? This happens more than I'd like to admit, and by six o'clock, we realize we haven't planned anything for dinner. So I think it's really important to have your kitchen really well stocked. For me, I always have time for making breakfast at dinner. I think it kind of sounds fun, and so making things like pancakes or waffles, even a bowl of cereal always works. But the thing that I do a lot uh, is an egg burrito. So I just scrambled up some eggs. I have tortillas that are kind of raw and you have to cook a little bit, but they taste way better than just kind of things that you would buy at the store. I get mine at Whole Foods. And then I just add a little Tabasco and some white cheddar and it's pretty amazing. That with some popcorn while watching a movie always works. Um, I try to have a couple of not too bad for you things in the freezer. We buy these pizzas called Vicolo cornmeal crust, um, you don't feel too guilty having them. They're better than calling in for delivery. And then lastly, we always try to have some things that make a quick like Greek meal, some hummus, some tzatziki, tabbouleh, pita bread, and some vegetables is always a great go-to snack as well. Rhiannon asked, what are your top tips for making a really small kitchen work better? When I first moved into my studio, I had pretty much this amount of space. Um, there wasn't a dishwasher, I didn't have a disposal. It was really tight quarters, but I made it work. I think the most important thing is to be really good at editing the things that you need versus the things that you want. So for me, I had a blender, but there was truly no space and it took up pretty much like half of the counter space. So I put that in storage or in another closet um, so that I didn't need it on a daily basis and it wasn't taking up a ton of space. When I moved in with Jeffrey, um, our apartment was tiny and we had one of those kind of galley kitchens where you had to kind of like scooch by each other to like even pass each other in the kitchen. And we decided not to have a microwave. Um, my life kind of sucked. I felt like anytime I had leftovers, they were terrible. But it was one of those things that everything else that we chose to have was more important than that. So I think the first thing is to really be good at editing. And whenever it is possible to have products that are kind of like multi-use, if there's a pan that is good for both doing your pasta and doing sauces, try to have things that have multi-use um, you know, possibilities. And then lastly, I would say you want to have as much counter space as possible because that's going to make the experience in the kitchen while you're in there cooking and cleaning that much better. So try to keep your counter as clear as possible. Get things off the counter. So if you have a butcher block that is holding all of your knives, instead get one of those magnetic strips you can put up on the wall, get your knives over there. Same goes with your paper towel, get that off the counter so that you have as much room as possible. Ophelia asked, do you look up recipes before shopping at the market or do you buy ingredients as you see them and rustle up a dish on the fly? Anytime I have tried to rustle up a dish on the fly, it has been completely inedible. So I am a girl who really sticks to a recipe. And for the most part, I try to be organized. If I'm going to the market, I will try to bring a recipe with me or jot it down. But for those times I do forget, uh, I have gotten a lot better at just taking pictures of recipes that I see either in cooking magazines or something online. I'll grab a screenshot or even a cookbook I have at home. I'll just take a picture on my phone because I always have my phone with me. And then it's really easy to reference when I'm at the market. I typically get overwhelmed if I'm trying to figure things out on the go. So that really helps me. Um, and I think that's typically why I am much more of a person who's inclined towards baking instead of cooking because everything is really precise. Um, of course, there are, are some things when I go to the market, if I'm making a salad, I know the go-to vegetables that I'm going to get, but for the most part, I am very good about bringing a list. Lauren asked, we just bought a new house. We have all the essentials from our old home, but I'll be looking to pick up a few items to spruce up our new digs. Any recommendations on must-have tools or decorative elements? Well, you're in a really good place just because it sounds like you have everything that you need and you're looking to just kind of give everything a bit of a refresh. That's definitely similar to the situation we were in when we bought our new home and we just did a few touches here and there. The first, we got all new dish towels. Um, seems like a really simple thing, but it makes a big difference. They all feel really clean and fresh. Um, additionally, we got a pretty little rug, great bright colors, and it really helps because everything else in our kitchen is really neutral. Um, the other thing that I would keep in mind is what you keep out. Um, for us, we have a bunch of spoons and spatulas, that kind of thing. And so instead of keeping them in our old canisters that were kind of like rusted and like really gross, we got new ones. They're marble and they make everything look more chic. 
Um, but along those lines, think of what you have out typically. If it's a bowl of fruit or if you keep your coffee out, consider putting them, um, your fruit in a new bowl or your coffee in a really pretty canister so that everything looks fresh. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Ask Emily, and please continue sending in your questions to me via the comments section on my blog or through social media with the hashtag AskEmily.